thing again. I had to create a whole nother unit, a whole nother event. And it looks like we are live on the second event. And we'll see if this works. So I don't know what to tell you guys. Having some technical difficulties, but it is what it is. Hopefully, hopefully the people will be fluid enough to move over to here. Well, this is a test to see if the folks are fluid enough to come over to this new event. <laughs> Triforce Rich is in the house. Eduardo is in the house. That was quick. Williams Watches is in the house. And R. Wags, he's in the house, and he says it's good audio. I'll tell you, we're having definite te technical difficulties. I thought I had resolved the, the API mismatch issue, and obviously we have not because when I did a restart on the video pro to get rid of the chipmunk voice it then would not allow me to restart the stream that same problem we were having the other day that I haven't had for the last three shows but now that same problem has manifest itself again I am on the list for the black magic uh, switcher that has an encoder built into it but with everybody at home and everybody live streaming and so on and so forth, they're, they're, they are sold out everywhere. And so I haven't been able to get my hands on one, but I'm, I'm uh, hopefully going to get one of those and try that and see if that works any better than this. Uh, Video Pro seems to be acting up. Seems to be acting up. Uh, let's see, Craig, any phone calls at the 5 p.m. are going to cost them $2 per minute. i got to start doing that. i got to start upcharging. Up, it's called upcharging. And our wag says your chipmunk voice brings a laugh to us. Oh, by the way, our wags, can you check on crypto.com? Crypto.com. They have a similar thing where they'll pay interest on Bitcoin. And if you could check and see who's behind that and see if they're any good, it might be interesting. It might be interesting to compare them to BlockFi and see what it what that's all about thurston how the third is in and he's he says five by five i'm dialed in whilst whilst driving so we'll be silent but enjoying the show says kevin triforce rich yeah we don't want him to be texting while driving triforce rich uh be a serve we are both on the same page and know who ron the shrink is right and our wag says hi carlos cool in indiana 63 yeah it was it was relatively cool here today probably around 70 or so uh, Williams Watches says, did you catch my comment on the 18238 on the latest stream just now? Well, not if you did it just now. Uh, let's say, I think he's cringy dork, but harmless. It's about all I can, okay, uh, let's see. Um, okay, Craig, would you buy the Seiko Shogun over the Marine Master 300 uh, S? S B D X O one seven. The Marine Master. I, I thought about a Marine Master back in the day, but they're pretty thick and pretty pretty heavy and all yeah, I would take the Shogun. I would take the Shogun. Uh let's see. Had to reboot the video pro, yes. Uh let's see. Sure will crypto dot com. Okay, so here's the deal, folks. Tim if you guys haven't seen it, check out the video he put out recently where he he compared, he did a Grand Seiko versus Rolex video. And, um, of course, a bunch of people pointed this out to me. And I'll tell you what's happening here, folks. <clears throat> and we're seeing it happen in real time. What's happening is, about two years ago, I started talking about Grand Seiko and started comparing Grand Seiko specifically the 231 diver there on the left that's stunner right there comparing it head to head with the Submariner and and I had the nerve to say that in many ways that watch is superior to a Submariner and you can go back and look at the comments back then two years ago you're crazy you can't compare a, a Seiko to to a Rolex, you know, what are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. You know, you're out of your mind. You know, blah, 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 blah. All this, you know, almost nobody agreed with me 
Only a few diehard Grand Seiko people agreed with me, right? Now fast forward two years, and everybody's starting to say, you know what? Craig was right all along. The Grand Seiko is fantastic. And now there's not that much pushback anymore. And, and, and now, now I'm starting to compare this, this stunner, this gold stunner on wrist to high-end watches like Patek, Vacheron, Lange. And, and guess what? I, I'm getting a little bit of pushback here and there, but not a whole lot. The, the resistance is fading. The resistance out there is fading, folks. They're packing their bags and they're, they're, they're folding up their tents and they're, they're pulling out. What do you think about that? What do you think about the resistance fading? Okay, let's see. Um, saw the show you were a couple of days ago. Triforce Rich, nice collection also. Okay. Uh, where in the UK are you? Okay, we got some little conversations back and forth. Let's say he is the infamous notorious troll we all know. I figured it out a few streams ago, but thought others would catch on. Okay. Craig, Craig is ahead of the curve. There we go. Uh, Wynn Walker is my fault, but I like o OT more than... Okay, there we go. Um, okay, all right. So, now, when we, when we were doing part one of this show, I was showing some photos of the 002 Stunner, the 002 Stunner, and I was explaining that it's extremely difficult to capture the striking presence of this watch in a photograph. It, it's very, very difficult. This is a stunner, stunning piece. Absolutely stunning. And so let me keep going here. Let me just see if I can get, uh, these have to load in because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a thing. But there's another picture. See if I can get another picture going here that's a little bit don't like these pictures. Some of these are not that great. And I hate to show pictures that just don't... You can't get the colors right on this gold. It's just hard to get the color right with the white balance. But you can at least see the brushing on the side and a little bit of that detail. A little bit of that detail and the nice beautiful crown. At least you can get a... You can get a little bit of a taste. A little bit of a, t a taste of the extreme staggering beauty of this watch the just the look of it just just the whole thing and there she is in person there she is on wrist and there's this grinder <clears throat> back back a couple months ago when I first started talking about this is this grinder in the chat oh you you you'll never get one you know if if you see it you'll have some excuse for why you didn't buy it so on and so forth all this stuff right and then this other grinder was in the chat. And you'll recall, you all will recall, when I bought two and a half Bitcoin. Well, I bought, it was, I think it was more than two and a half Bitcoin because it was $25,000 worth of Bitcoin. I bought it here on the channel. And then, and then Bitcoin, we had the virus thing, right? And then Bitcoin took a big dump. And he, he basically says, you know, you, 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 uh, you cut your your twenty five thousand dollars in half, right? I said, well, no, I'm not selling my Bitcoin, <laughs> right? Now it's back up to about what I paid for it. It was below ten thousand. You'll recall on the channel, it was below ten thousand dollars, and I was making the point. I was trying to do a demonstration and saying people should buy Bitcoin below ten thousand dollars, right? That's my limit. I don't want to pay more than ten thousand. So I I did a demo here on the channel. I bought twenty five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, and and so the same idiot that said, A, I'd never have this watch on my wrist, and, and B, I lost half my money on the Bitcoin, uh, I guess he was kind of wrong on both points right now as we stand here today. So there you go. And that's how that goes. And our, and our Wags will remember that transaction. He'll remember that. He's got a memory for these things. And let's see. Um, Driver's Search, Craig keeps ignoring the 18238, my comment. Craig, near mint box and paper service for 11.5 thoughts. Well, if it's really that mint, that's a heck of a buy. Can you send us a photo? Please email us 
a photo if you can and I will show it I will show it I'm not trying to ignore you I just I can't catch everything in the chat I try my best see the the Megan's law comment was the dead giveaway but yeah tons of other indications not to mention the dumb dog pick okay the mighty rat uh, cool I grew up in uh, okay uh, just down the road okay all right our wags just like Bitcoin Craig you're always ahead of the curve the O2 stands up to any Patek Vacheron or Lang a there there we go our wags in the house uh, this is rat is from Walsall okay and view serve uh, wind walker is my favorite tool to it would help if I could see. I only wish that they would have eventually given a, a motor for the boat, boat. Okay. Who is this grinder? I don't remember who it was. I, I don't. Somebody in the chat might remember who it was. You, you probably remember this. This, You know, the typical troll. Um, yeah, he actually accused me of being a whatever a couple of months ago completely out of nowhere okay um, the game was epic okay I'm not sure what they're talking about there okay so Wind Walker and our integral parts of my middle school freshman day okay they got a little conversation going on there that's a good thing so anyhow let's look at a couple more photos let's look at a couple more photos of the stunner and nice nice detailing the, the folks that like to look at the detailing on the back nice nice display back I'm not not a thing for me I could care less but I mean it is nice to look at it and it is nice that it has the uh, power reserve there on the back so that's something to think about and I'll tell you what my biggest concern was was I gonna like wearing a watch on a strap never really did it for any period of time but I love it. This thing is super comfortable on wrist. Just super comfortable on wrist. Really a pleasure to wear. And I think that's the way watches should be. Watches should be a pleasure to wear. Wind Walker. Okay, we already read that one. Craig, you should wear the 005. It gets no wrist time. Lance in the house. I mean, that is a damn shame. It really is. I mean, it literally has been sitting there in that spot for weeks. I think I've worn it once since I got the 002 uno once it's really sad poor poor thing uh let's see i like final fantasy more final fantasy and metal girl my favorite franchise okay there we go uh let's see i figured out ron the shrinks to identity it's not too hard to figure out triforce rich there you go the only thing we we know for sure about ron the shrink is that he's not real bright that's the only thing we know for sure not not highly intelligent creature uh, but anyway look at the way that 18 karat gold catches the light look look at the look jeez <laughs> are you kidding me and I mean in person like I say the color is not spot on in this photo I'm telling you this right now the color is not spot on but when you see it in person and you see that 18 karat yellow gold catch the light it's just absolutely absolutely stunning and these people going out and spending twenty thousand dollars for a steel stunner what do they think <laughs> what do they think they're doing what is going on folks are, are some people absolutely nuts out there absolutely nuts what's going on by the way i'm going to give you some inside information <clears throat> i just moved some more money from one of my checking accounts uh, into my Coinbase Pro account. Into my Coinbase Pro account. I'm giving you some inside information. And let's see here. I'm going to let this, I'm going to refresh this and I'll cut to it. it. Takes about, they take their time because they want that float, right? It takes like five business days for the money to show up. But I kind of like that. If I'm moving some cash into that account, I kind of like the fact that it has a cool off period right where I don't do anything hasty I don't do anything hasty so um, anyway Bitcoin sitting at uh, 9681 9681 
and I might buy some more Bitcoin before it goes up. Now, then we might have another pullback. I would love to have a pullback down to like $8,000. I think that would be fantastic. I'd buy a couple more Bitcoin at that point. But uh, just in case, I'm moving some cash over into that account so that I can uh, snatch, snatch some more Bitcoin. Just a little heads up for those of you that uh, are uh, monitoring this sort of thing. Uh, let's see. Also, I don't really believe Ron ever owned that Submariner IWC he claims he had. He would have shown them off before selling. Okay, there you go. Uh, apparently, the jewel pattern on the back of the O2 is meant to replicate the map around the Grand Seiko factory in Japan. Interesting. Interesting. I heard that Final Fantasy Seven. By the way, the, the watch that Tim talked about, the one that's like 70000 bucks or something, it supposedly has superior finishing on the, the, uh, the movement and all to this watch. But I'll tell you what, this watch... It looks pretty damn good to me. I mean, I guess if you have like a super magnifying glass and you're really looking close, I guess you can find some little little details that the $70,000 one got even better. But, uh, but this one is pretty good, I have to tell you. Let's see. Eduardo says, personally, I still think that a day date with a white tapestry dial looks better than the O2, but maybe it's because I'm young and like the name Rolex. I don't blame you. I don't blame you, Eduardo. Not one bit. There's nothing wrong with a date eight, especially when you're young and you have good eyes. No problem. Well, I wore them for years. Viewserve, I'm playing that now, uh, Lance, uh, just as good as I remember. Got on Steam, it's easier than the earlier FF games. And by the way, the 002, this 002 Stunner, give you an update on, on what uh, Bitcoin's doing right this moment. The 002 Stunner, is uh is also kind of tricky to find there aren't that many of them around i think steve still has his available but there are very few of them around and very few of them available used so it's not exactly an easy piece to uh to get your hands on much easier to get your hand on hands on a day date let's see here lance it bitcoin will pull back tomorrow john mcafee uh ghost coin starts tomorrow Cool, let's see what happens. Hopefully we'll have a nice dip. I wouldn't mind if it dipped down to like 5,000 so I could snatch a few up. It wouldn't bother me one bit. Uh, let's see, when I was a teenager, I played a lot of Sinclair, ZX81, and ZX Spect Spectrum. Lance is in the house. Uh, I agree, someone who claims to have 500K in student loans wouldn't own luxury watches like Rolex and IWC. Okay, I've seen that 70K watch in person, Craig. It's very interesting, but I like your 002 more. I hear you. I, yeah, I would absolutely take the 002. Absolutely, that's what I would do. Not even a close call. Not even a close call on that one. And look at that, look at that deployment clasp. How stunning. How stunning is that? How stunning is that clasp? Okay, so uh, let's see here. Uh, what do you think of Bethesda games? Okay, they, they got a real conversation going on here. Uh, Carlos is an old school gamer. Fallout New Vegas is probably the best game from Bethesda. Okay. See, I don't even know about any of these games. I'm like totally out of the loop here. Uh, be a serve if you want a crazy deep and philosophical PS1 okay there we go another one okay I think New Vegas is more fun than Fallout 3 and 4 okay we got a bunch of gamers in here if you serve they don't even make the New Vegas okay there we go Audrey used to play games computer games so yeah Never, I never got into the computer games. Okay, here we go. Look at the way the sun is, is playing off of that clasp. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't make this stuff up, folks. You can't make this stuff up. That is absolutely 
absolutely stunning. Stunning. <clears throat> Let's see here. <clears throat> we talking watches or video games? Kevin's in the house. For once, I'm trying to keep it on watches, and they're changing the subject. Usually, I'm changing the subject to something else, and they're trying to keep it on watches. So we're, it is what it is. Um, I did watch recently your video made in May 2019 with 005. Maybe it's time to do an anniversary. I did do, I think I did a one-year anniversary video. I, th I thought I did a one-year anniversary video for the 005. I think I did. Maybe I didn't, but I thought I did. Isn't that sad? I can't remember. Uh, Mighty Rat ZX80 only had uh, 0.5k. Okay, okay. <laughs> They're still talking games. <laughs> Even the okay. There we go. Um, now I only play a bit of StarCraft II. Craig is all lost. Where Craig is all lost. Where guys. Come on, okay. Uh, Craig, Bethesda is one of the largest gaming companies in the world, and they are located in Bethesda, Maryland. Surprised you haven't heard of them. Well, I've heard of Bethesda, Maryland. I was born there. <laughs> but no, I've never been into the games thing. I wonder if Mike Mann was involved in, in, uh, in that company at one point or another. He's from, he's from Bethesda. He was involved in just about everything tech back in the day. Uh, let's see. Williams Watches never got into computer games. Uh, okay, there you go. There's another one that hasn't gotten into them. And there's a, a, Assassin Creed. I've heard that name. I've heard Assassin Creed. Uh, I think if I got into them, I'd probably waste too much time doing them. So I, that's why I've stayed away from them. And Lance sent me a photo. <laughs> okay. I can imagine. Okay, let's take a look at this photo. Let's do a quick time check first. And let's take a look at this photo. Da, 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 okay. Looks like it's going to be a crater. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of a little bit funky looking. I, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't like what's going on on the case there around the crown. Those crown, the funky looking crown guards. Some of the some of the Crador watches are just not that cool. You know, you know, they just and Seiko's that way too. They make some ugly watches. Let me tell you. And and no, this one that's one that I would probably not wear. Probably I would pass on that. Don't like the way that crown is. Don't like those crown guards. Looks like they tried to get a little too cute. And I don't like it when they try to get a little too cute with watches. I mean, if you look at, I, I subscribe to the watch box, to the videos. Every day I get the email on the, the videos that Tim does. And I click just on the email, and, they, and you can see the thumbnails for the videos. And I mean, nine times out of ten, they're just a straight up ugly freaking watch. I mean, he does some reviews on some ugly watches, let me tell you. And occasionally he gets a he gets a stunner, right? Like he did a review on the 002, right? But he does some he reviews some ugly watches. Um okay, so got to be honest with you when I got my hands on Scrim, I play okay, another game thing. Okay. Uh let's see. <clears throat> Crador is a mix of vintage Seamaster, Submariner, and Seiko watch, Eduardo. Warren Buffett sold, sold all his Goldman Sachs shares. Okay. Crater looks like a new Alpinist. I highly recommend the... Okay, there's another game, gaming thing. Uh, let's see. Lance, uh, uh, not a fan of that one either today, though. Sorry. Uh, okay, so we were talking about that that crater again. Okay, yeah, I would pass on it. I would do a, a full pass on that one. Okay, so let's um, let's see if we can look, take another look at at the stunner. There is the clasp unfoiled, and there you go. That's how you can see how that 
that mechanism kind of works a little bit. A little bit of a look, a look at that. Uh, let's see. Craig, want me to give you a clue who Ron the Shrink is? <laughs> well, from what you guys have said, I'm I'm guessing he's either the Dog Man or who's that other um, nasty troll? Um, the real weird guy uh, that hangs out with Archie a lot. What's his name? Um, the really screwed up guy. Wong, Chip Wong. Yeah. I would, I would guess it would be either him, either the dog man or Chip Wong, I would guess. Okay, let's see. Uh, um, ugly watches have to exist simply for us to appreciate too pretty. I hear you. Uh, where has where has Bree been at, Eduardo? She is doing finals this week. She's taking finals, but if you're following her, she's put out some videos on her Instagram. Be sure to follow her. Um, and I will let her know that, that, that you want an update and hopefully she's getting A's on her finals. Yes, we want the clue or just say, okay, Craig, what do you think of cy Cyclops, Cyclops that are the underside of the crystal? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I believe, I believe that, um, that, uh, Victorian Ox watch that I had had that uh, I've gotten so I don't even like having the date on a watch to tell you the truth that's one of the things I like about this 002 no date at all so I can take or leave the Cyclops thing also on a Rolex I mean it some people just don't like the Cyclops and they, they get all bent out of shape about it it doesn't bother me one bit I can take or leave it it really is not something that I would that would make me make a decision one way or the other. Uh, but I would think if I wanted a Cyclops, I'd want one the way Rolex does it because I think they work pretty well. Uh, I'm not sure how well these other ones work. The one that I had on that Victorinox didn't really work that great, but it was sort of like what you're talking about. Uh, so, yeah, I think the way Rolex does the Cyclops is, is pretty good. I, I think that would be fine. Uh, you got it, Craig. He's the latter. Okay. I think Ron is the dog man because of that dog as his picture. Okay. Uh, the, the mighty rat. Some Seikos are for different markets. Uh, Ron is the least nasty of the trolls. Couldn't make a child cry with his best insult. Uh, yes, dog man is on my list to watch. There you go. There you go. I, I've watched a few of his videos. I mean, you know, some of it, he makes some interesting points sometimes. He he gives a lot of bad information also, though. Misleads a lot of people. There is the stunner. Another another look at how that strap and everything works. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Let's see. <laughs> Pass on the dog, man, somebody says. Uh so let me think what else uh, didn't get a lot didn't I didn't get as much uh, as much pushback on this uh, this comparing the 002 to these luxury brands as I thought I would get I thought I'd get more more pushback maybe Maybe the, the, quote, experts out there are beginning to acquiesce. Maybe they're beginning to acquiesce. What do you think? You think they're, they're recognizing that that stunner right there, that, that we got a picture there, that that is just absolutely stunning? Do you think they're caving and they're realizing that that's the case? Beauty Surf says, nice tie. This is one of my favorite ties of all my ties. I think it's Neiman Marcus. Yeah. It came from Needless Markup. And they are going out of business, folks, unfortunately. Let's see if I can get this in the shot here. There we go. Yep. Yep. They are filing bankruptcy. Hopefully somebody will buy the name and continue the concept of high-quality clothing 
at ridiculously high prices. Hey, speak of Brianna, she's in the house. Somebody asked about Brianna earlier, so there you go. You can ask her right now while she's in the chat. She usually doesn't stay in here long because she's studying and and doing tests and all that cool stuff. So if you want to ask her something, you better do it now. Craig, do you have any book suggestions? Absolutely. Anything by Ken Follett? Ken Follett? Uh, any of the old uh, Sidney Sheldon books? I thought they were all cool, like Master of the Game. That was really cool back in the day. I was talking to my friend. I don't read books anymore because my eyes aren't that great, and it just I kind of get a headache if I read for too long. So I don't really read books anymore, but... Yeah, anything by Ken Follett, anything by uh, Sidney Sheldon, uh, Michael Crichton, the one that wrote, uh, uh, didn't he write Jurassic Park or something like that? But he had a thing called Time Machine. Was it called Time Machine? Maybe somebody will put in the chat the, the book I'm, I'm thinking of. Oh, my gosh, that's so fantastic. Uh, Michael Crichton. Uh, so, yeah, stuff like that. Absolutely. Check it out. Uh, Craig, you need to get a, a GS chronograph to round out the collection. No, I'm not a chronograph fan. They'd be too busy. The dial's too busy. I don't need all that going on on the dial. Craig, your O2 is stunning. End of story. Only people who don't like it are people who can't imagine paying that much for a gold GS. has nothing to do with quality. Triforce re Rich coming into the house... Well, here's the thing. This is what I used to always say, and a buddy of mine used to always say all the time, is if you, if you, the first thing you should do when you're deciding to buy something is find the thing that you really want. Find what you really want. Narrow it down to what you really want. And don't, do, don't have cost be a consideration in that, okay? In other words, just figure out what you really want. Then worry about the cost. So in other words, purchase things without regard to cost. And, and what you do is, so the way that works is you figure out what you want. And then you figure out, okay, can I afford it? Is it reasonable? Can I afford it? And if it is, then you save up and, and you buy it, right? But you, you, the first thing is you figure out what you want first. And, and then you figure out how, how you're going to pay for it and how you're going to buy it. I think that's the best way to proceed. Now, some things you're just going to not be able to get. It's just going to be out of reach. You're just not going to be able to get it, right? But if it is within reach, then you go ahead and you get it. So that's what I did with this watch. So, be honest, says Eduardo, they are doing well, okay. She's responding. That's good. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. The lovely brief fit dance. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Craig, do you listen to books on tape? I was an Audible member for a short time, and I listened to a couple of books, but I have so many great podcasts that I listen to now that are just really well-produced and that I learn a lot from, and they're all free, which is nice. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit cheap, okay? Uh, and so I listen to the podcast now. I really enjoy them. I listen to a number of them that are just really well-produced. There's just so many out there on any topic that you're interested in. Uh, you can find them, and that's what I think is cool. I listen to those when I'm walking. Craig, do you think that citizens should make a higher-end line like GS? Might be cool. They have a couple of watches that are pretty cool. They have that one that's titanium that's like seven grand, right? So they do make a few that are pretty cool already. Steve had that one that was titanium. I think he had it in stock. He might still have it. He may have sold it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Same, but we are both relatively young. Craig has made it already and can afford to buy what he wants. Triforce Rich. Uh, I can afford to buy a lot of the things I want, but not necessarily everything I want. <laughs> oh, boy. There you go. Um, I wanted Omega Speedmaster Professional went to AD. And, it was, and also, by the time you get to be my age, 
you realize how short life is and that you might as well enjoy some things and, and you know, uh, you don't have to take it all to your grave. You don't have to take everything to your grave, right? Uh, so there's that. Um, Craig, have you bought your last watch? Possibly. Po that is possible. Probably not likely, though, but possible. Be a serve also. Craig will not admit it, but I bet he got 30% off that watch. <laughs> Triforce Rich. I got a great buy on the watch. Steve gave me a great buy on the watch. I'm not going to lie, uh, but I'm not going to say the, the specifics of the details. But yes, I got a, a, a very, uh, very fair. We negotiated hard. You know, I went in hard for the, for the, you know, for the, the right hook. And, uh, and we, we made a deal. We made a deal that we were both happy with. So he's given me good deals on all the watches I've gotten from him. And he's given good deals to, um, to other subscribers on the channel as well. So, and if somebody wants that other 002 that he has, hey, ask for a deal. You never know what's going to happen until you lay the money in front of him. He likes cash too, by the way. You lay cash down on the table, cash talks. Uh, let's see. Citizen does make high-end quartz that rivals the GS9F. Absolutely. They sure do. Don't you just hate that Ron the Shrink Guy? <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Eduardo, a cheap uh, rubs his uh, rubs his fingers with a 20K watch on his wrist, but I'm also cheap when it comes to generic stuff. Yeah, it's funny how how some of us can be like real ch real cheap on a lot of things, and then when we want something really nice, we we go for the kill, right? But like, it, there's an old saying: if you if you watch the pennies, is this what it is? If you watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. It's something like that, right? So yeah, all the little small expenditures, people going to Starbucks and spending, you know, 10 bucks on a coffee and all these little small things that people spend money on all the time. I don't buy any of those things. I, I don't waste my money on any of that kind of stuff, right? And, and so therefore, you end up with more money that you can occasionally spend a nice chunk on something that you really like, right? If you're not like piddling your money away on a bunch of other little things. I think that's how that works. Um, let's see. All citizens should have should should avoid citizen. <laughs> Carlos, his margin is forty percent, so that would be max. I suggest what I suggest that to Craig, but he indicated that Steve made some money on it. Uh, Craig, um, what is something you want but can't have? Um. Huh. Well, I mean, you know, a, a nice home in the Hamptons, maybe. <laughs> I think they start at the multiple millions. Uh, I don't think I would uh, would swing that. Um, but see, but I don't really want a big place. I mean, this place is plenty big enough here, but I, I, in my house in Florida is a nice size. Um, I, you get a place that's too big and it's just too much maintenance and t too many taxes and and all that so I mean yeah there are extravagances that that obviously you know I wouldn't want to spend my money on I'll put it that way um, so I'm very comfortable with with my setup the way it is right now um, if anything I'm I'm in the process of downsizing downsizing you know selling some things you know stuff like that but uh, uh, yeah, I, I can't think of anything that I really want that that you know that I don't have. So there you go. My wants aren't that great though. Aren't that luxurious. Ah, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Lamont's in the house. There you go. Uh gotta pay off that five hundred K first. <laughs> Uh, Lance, uh, don't worry about it. Man up and stand up. Don't use your wrench. I believe you. Okay. Oh, Ron. Speaking of Ron the Shrink, he's in the house. Ron the Shrink, a mentally ill individual, is in the house. Just just tuning in. 
What's Chi Town saying that he knows? Hey there, Lamont. Uh, there you go. Uh, and uh, let's see. Eduardo, my father always said that if you want cheap, you buy it. If you want cheap, you'll buy it forever. If you want expenses, you'll never buy another one. That's why his shotguns are worth 10k each on the used market. Yeah, he bought quality, absolutely. Especially something like that, that lasts a long time. You want to get the high quality unit. It's not a disposable item, right? So you want to get the high quality unit. Absolutely, I agree with that. Yep, and tools, same way. Like I have all my tools are snap-on tools, and you know, they'll basically last a lifetime, and if they break, they'll replace them, right? So, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, what about another wife, Craig? Yeah, no, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> don't think that's going to happen. I think I've learned my lesson on all of that. Moderation and discretion is how to avoid turning pleasures into chores. There you go. That's a very, very smart thing to say. I, I like Lamont's urban vocabulary. He keeps it real. There you go. How is your bro chip doing <laughs> I miss your dad Mr. Wong in his in his roles okay so we think that's chip wong huh in the, in the house we think that's who that is okay uh Ron are you the dog man on an alt account so now somebody thinks he might be a dog a, a dog the dog man Craig what Craig what were you guys saying about me well they were saying that you're not very bright and that you've got a lot of issues was sort of what they were saying and to summarize you know that's what they kind of what they were saying so uh it's like elon musk sells all we human are sick we want more than we need uh yeah you got to be careful about that because your possessions can start owning you as opposed to you owning your possessions if you're not careful so yeah you want to you want to have an efficient setup efficient I think is what you want to do. And let's see. Uh, somebody says, "Hey there, Crappy." Okay, so I guess Crappy's in here too. I, can, I don't think I can see Crappy. Um, Ron is a real person. Okay, there you go. Life is too short to fill up your house with cheap, forgettable junk. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And Lamont says, "My dad always tell me I'm screwed when he when he dies." <laughs> There, well, at least you don't have to take on his debts. At least that's the way that works. You don't have to take on his debts. Crappy, you can look up the video for yourself on Mark Goldberg's channel. There you go. Um, Ron, we don't think that you're who you say you are. <laughs> Ron Goldberg, there you go. Uh, better get on his good side, Lamont. You want that sweet will. Yeah. Ron the Shrink says, I've been on AC3 streams a bunch before. There you go. And Ron the Shrink says, I'm not Chip. I've been on crappy stream before. There you go. Ron the Shrink. Defending himself. <clears throat> Joey Ben in the house. Come on, Craig. Don't don't be a bitter divorce man. There are good women out there, Joey, in the house. Well, how, how much experience do you have, Joey? How many wives have you had? Please do tell. Give us your, give, tell us your experience. Ron's not a fake account. He's been live before. Cheat Town in the USA. Well, there you go. Hey, be served. Nice to meet you. I'm definitely not you on a different account. Ron and Shriek, what, what issues do I have, Craig? Maybe they'll let you know in the chat, Ron. Maybe they will respond to you on all, on, on all that. And they've claimed that you're not really who you say you are. What do you think about that? They've alleged that you could even possibly be either do the dog man or that weirdo Chip Wong. That's what they've alleged here in the chat. What do you think about that? <clears throat> um, Ron, Craig is giving you grief because you said something nice about Tudor. How long, how long you car is Craig? Uh, I have a Prius, and I love it. And I love it. It's not very long. It's... It's kind of compact, but I can put a lot of camera gear in the back of that puppy. Ron, I have to admit, you are a legend. Not you, but your other alias. The the rage you have 
induced will go into the Troll Hall of Fame? Great, great question, Lamont. Okay. Um, Triforce, not sure what you're referring to. <laughs> Ron, I've cried with laughter at some of your shenanigans. There you go. Um, you serve. Um, no way, Ron. It, no, no way, Ron is Chip Wong. Chip Wong is a genius. <laughs> and, and Ron the Shrink says Chip Wong is a sociopath. Uh oh. Uh, Chip Wong is a legend. I mean, legend amongst legends. All right, let's 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 check out another photo here of the 002 Stunner, and let's get Ron the Shrink's. Uh, there's another angle of that class. Let let's get Ron the Shrink's comment on that deployant clasp that 18 karat gold deployant clasp and how it's capturing the sunlight like that 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 reflection of the sun on that beautiful 18 karat yellow gold deployant clasp let's see if we can get him him to uh, chime in on that puppy joey's in the house married once was bitter like you craig but three years ago i find true love with a beautiful woman couldn't be happier hopefully you too craig will find true love again oh so you've been married twice and the second one is is working out okay joey way to go joey <clears throat> two big thumbs up for joey's happiness fantastic a wise man said wealth is not measured by how much you have but how little you need I don't totally agree. I have more than I need, <laughs> Mike, in the house. Yeah, I hear you. I well, you know, but I, I think you don't have to have a ton. That that's why I don't get this. These people that have watch box with like twenty four watches. That that I don't get. I I think if you have two or three really nice watches, you know, you know, and then wear them and enjoy them, and then buy the other things that go along with it. Buy the accessories. Buy the clothing. Buy the shoes. You know buy other nice things that go along with with the nice watch i think that's a better approach than than hoarding a whole bunch of of watches that you don't wear but that's probably just me wasn't the docket today supposed to be vc well we were comparing the 002 to other high-end brands and and saying that really this is it this this is what you need is something like the 002 not a vacheron not a patek you know, not an Mars. I mean, you need something like the 002 is what we're suggesting here. Uh, so that's what that's what that is. The difference between Grand Seiko and Patek Philippe movement service is that Patek services are done by highly skilled watchmakers, while Grand Seiko are done by highly skilled electricians. <laughs> I doubt that. I don't think they. they I don't think they um, service the spring drive. I think you need uh, somebody that a little bit more on the ball to to. Uh, to service the spring drive but it doesn't have to be serviced very often L literally go decades without having to service it so there's that you serve hey ron can you email craig pics of your submariner and iwc we're dying to see them uh derek's in the house i think we need a uh we need a date on the ad visit craig when can we expect to see you there with Bree. Oh, the AD visit. Oh, I don't know when they're going to open. Maryland is going to be very, very slow to reopen. Uh, it's It has really been trying, trying for the business community. And I'm hoping the AD survives. I mean, a lot of these businesses are not going to survive this draconian lockdown. Uh, this the, these jackbooted thugs forcing them to stay locked down. This has been really devastating for small businesses here in Maryland, and uh, it's it's really a problem. Uh, my brother has a thousand square meters house. Some of the rooms didn't uh, didn't visit for years. He said he needs two square meters to sleep, and and said by too late. And okay. Uh, not easy to sell. Uh, okay, so yeah, so maybe he over overbought. Yep, absolutely. What is your opinion of Seiko Spring Drive SBDB031 in titanium? Can you send me an email uh, and then I can pull it up and show them? If you can email, it's my name, craigship at gmail.com, C R A I G S H I P P at gmail.com. And then I'll go ahead and pull that up, and, and we'll take a look together. That's the easiest way to do that. Even though GS is a 
is a lower than Patek on the watch hierarchy chart, the value that JS offers for your money makes a better brand in my book. Okay. Craig, do you think Seiko will ever do you think Seiko will ever top the 002? Not Seiko, maybe Grand Seiko. It's possible. It's possible they're they're hitting it out of the park on a regular basis. They're coming out with stunners. So they might even top the 002. I wouldn't put it past them. I'm not sure what they could do to make this any better, though. I don't know what that would be because this thing is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Ron the Shrink says, my identity is not a secret, folks. I've been on the air several times. There you go. Um, Ron, do you know Lamont? Okay. Joey says, has anybody have a story of their spring drive being serviced? <clears throat> Steve has never had a client yet with a problem where a, a spring drive is needed service. So it's very rare that the spring drive ever has any problem. Very rare. Um, Craig, do you think many guys who are, mm, who are constantly flipping in and out of watches and filling up watch boxes are suffering from boredom and not enough diversity of hobbies um well you know that would be a good question for for steve's shrink buddy that he had on we should have him back on to talk about this again i i think definitely people uh, that hoard certain things that it it's some kind of a problem i i don't get it i don't understand why they would want to hoard like a whole bunch of for example steel rolexes i mean my gosh, if you've got one really great steel Rolex, let's say let's say you have a Pepsi or a Batgirl, right? Why in the hell would you want five others? I mean, I, I don't get that. I, I just don't understand it. I just wear the damn Pepsi and have a great time and buy some other stuff, right? Buy some nice shoes, buy a nice belt, you know, buy a nice cashmere sport coat, you know, whatever. But uh, there are other accessories you can buy uh, to go along with that watch, right? Um... Kyle's in the house. Trashy Larry getting hit hard right away. Okay. Uh, AC3 mentioned that life is too short to be wearing a Grand Seiko. Well, I mean, I guess if, if he doesn't like Grand Seiko, then he shouldn't wear one. I mean, but AC3, I mean, taking advice from a guy like AC3 is probably not a a good move, right? Uh, I, I don't know that, that, <laughs> that he's a really good role model for people. Just saying. He's an entertainer, but I wouldn't call him a role model. Um, so there you go. Please send me a link. Okay. Craig, why not stream more often, maybe daily? <laughs> oh, boy. Ah, uh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, Archie's bipolar with his opinions on GS. If more than three watches, how could you ever wear them all? Get the best watches to cover accuracy, tough dress and function. That's enough. No need for anything more. Tim McDonald. Tim bringing some reason, some reason into the conversation. And let's see. I think someone paid him to be positive on GS a while ago. Triforce Rich. FOMO is a huge drive of accumulating and buying, in my honest opinion. You feel anxiety of missing out. You buy a bunch of crap, and now you feel the regret with being saddled with a bunch of crap. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I was thinking that I prefer the 9F to the 9R spring drive because the 9F has the ability to be regulated to counteract quartz drift over time, and it has temperature regulation. Michael in the house. Well, yeah, they're two different animals. They're, they're two entirely different animals, and I like them both. Um, but, like, for this dress watch, I kind of love the watching that smooth secondhand glide around. <laughs> it's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, and the same thing on that diver. I mean, look at that secondhand on that diver. I mean, it's just, it's just mesmerizing. It's absolutely mesmerizing. And that one happens to be extremely accurate. I got really lucky. That one is just about almost as accurate as my 9F. I mean, my 9F is pretty much spot on 
and that one is you know picking up maybe a second a month or something the diver i mean it's insane it's insane how accurate that puppy is the o2 runs a little faster than that we'll find out in a couple weeks how fast let's see here um Archie changes his mind all the time and completely contradicts himself. It's quite laughable, really. Williams watches. I figured you, I figured you owned a Rolex Date Eight, eighteen thirty-eight. I had an eighteen oh three. It was my first Date Eight. Uh, I had an eighteen two three eight. I had a couple of those actually. Uh, yeah, I've had about four or five. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four. I've, I've had four day dates over the years. Uh, Craig, do you think that a watch collection should be balanced one of each style dress divers every day? Well, I mean, I, for years I wore generally a GMT. For a couple of years it was a sub, but generally a GMT, GMT or a sub in rotation with a day date, that was a great rotation. So, yeah, that worked. So a nice gold stunner and a nice heavy-use steel watch, that could be a very good rotation. Like this 002 in rotation with the 231 there, uh, th that could be a very good two-watch rotation. Absolutely. Um, let's see. The day date is the best option in my eyes. Derek, it's a great all-around watch for all the time. Absolutely. When you put all your eggs into delicate Pateks, you end up with a Casio on your wrist that's not good Archie isn't totally wrong though he keeps people from buying the shit some of these influencers are peddling on the gullible new enthusiast yeah to buy a lot of junk watches is not a good um, is not a good move buying a bunch of junk watches I agree with that Williams watches Triforce Rich don't worry pal it is inevitable that rodent one will buy a Patek and devastate Archie's world. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon, but some guys, uh, one of my watch groups posted a pic of 20 low, 20 low tier watches and said he would rather have them than one nice watch because of versatility. Guess you can have crap in every color. I hear you. Yes, Archie is not wrong, but his palette of watches is very limited. I know they don't lose value, but if you all would have the same watch. Or more. Yeah, watches are not good investments, folks. And if, if you put your money in something that, quote, doesn't lose value, you're losing what's called opportunity. That money should be invested and should be get, getting a significant return, you know, 8 10% per year return. If you get, for example, a 10% return on that money every year, in seven years it doubles. So you do not, do not want to put your money somewhere where it, quote, doesn't lose value. Because if it just holds steady, if you buy a watch for $15,000, for example, and 10 years later it's worth $15,000, you got screwed on that investment. That was not a good investment. Your money should grow over time, not stay the same. That's where people get screwed over on this whole watch thing, thinking it's an investment. Just because it held its value, they're thinking that it's it's good. But that ain't the case. Uh, Craig, what do you think of the current Dodge Challenger? I, you know, okay. They're, they're trying to recreate those old pony cars. Um, they're okay. Uh my buddy Dave Serio has one. I did a, I did a, um, a video. I don't. Was it the Challenger? It was one of those similar like that? The really, really hot, uh, really powerful V8. There's a video on my channel here. Just, just uh, check that out. Uh, you know, we did a dyno test on it and everything. Uh, they're cool. They're cool. But I mean, I don't think I would buy one. So there's that. Uh, Let's see here. Explore. I, I could use every day. The apps. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, Craig. Um, there is a watch salesman who is now selling $300 microgram watches on a monthly payment plan. Oh, jeez. That's terrible. Megan's in the house. She says, hey, sorry, but we're getting ready to wrap up, Megan. I'm sorry about that. I'm holding out for just to release 9F watches and titanium in the U.S. I think that would be ideal movement and material. 
combination for me. I hear you. That would be absolutely super cool. Did they do them for the J Japanese market already? I didn't know. But let us know. If you need to know the day or date, then just use your phone. I don't understand how Arrow Adam can review super high-end pieces all day, but his actual collection is full of, you know what? <laughs> G-Town, California, you could do that, but having the date on your wrist is a lot more convenient. But how often do you have to check the date during the day, really? Think about that. Watches aren't necessarily a great investment, but other, wa other luxury items keeps its value versus inflation. Got to admit that is pretty cool. Um, well, some luxury items like paintings, some art, and th things like that do really well. But watches are not one of those things. They usually don't hold their value very well at all. They're not, they're not a good investment, generally speaking. They're just a luxury item that you buy to wear and use. Don't count them as an investment. If they end up being a good investment, you got lucky. So there's how that works. Uh, let's see. Yes, they have 9F titanium watch for the Japanese market. Cool. Okay. We are going to wrap this puppy up. There's that 002 stunner one more time. That 002 stunner one more time. And there's a time check. We've been going for about an hour. We actually started this one 10 minutes late because I had to reboot, restart, do all kinds of funky stuff. And uh, But we've been going for an hour. And we will hopefully, hopefully see you guys tomorrow. And, hey, click subscribe and click the little bell. Click the little bell so you'll get notifications.